I mean, I think it can be quite true that we have difficulty distinguishing between mental and emotional states. And I think the reason that that's true is because it is often our mental states and the way in which we are creating mental structures that lead us into emotional experience. So, for instance, if we have a mental state where we are very engaged with trying to control um, events with our mind, and uh, then we spend a lot of time trying to control other people or control outcomes, and then we are not able to attain the level of control that we're trying to exert, say, with um, you know, a set of mental constructs that are designed to control outcomes in any particular situation, then we can easily become very angry, right? And so, so there you have that crossover between the mental state and the emotional state, right? And, and um, it's interesting because in Buddhism, actually, there's not really a strong delineation made between mental states and emotional states. They're all considered to be part of a whole. So, um, you know, it's, it's only in the West that we make those strong distinctions and I think they are worth being made but you can see how they are really inter interlocking I think you know especially in the West uh, you know that's a great thing to engage in this identification of emotions because I think that really many Westerners do not understand their emotional life completely and I think it's hard to understand our emotional life. And yet we, are, we have better education uh, in using our minds. And uh, you know, our education system really encourages conceptual grasping of reality uh, through the mental sphere. And so it is very helpful to use the mind then uh, to understand emotional states. But ultimately, emotional states cannot be resolved solely through mental understanding, which is, you know, a fallacy that many forms of psychotherapy uh, have. And I think that's changing with the trans transpersonal psychology, but and and the respect of the body in holding uh, experience. Um, but uh, I think it is important with Westerners to begin at the conceptual level because that is the area of the self that is most strongly developed. I'm not sure that, that would, a Buddhist would say that. I mean, they might not specifically say that, but I certainly say that. I don't think that emotional states can be healed through mental manipulation. The, the, mental, the mental sphere can be used to help elucidate and understand what the emotional state might be. But the mental state cannot be exercised to change the emotional experience. The mental sphere can be used to help organize and uh, make more comprehensible the nature of emotions. But the interventions from the mental sphere that, that some traditional forms of therapy try to exert into the emotional sphere, such as um, cognitive behavioral therapy, has they, they do that does work to a certain level, but for instance, behavior modification also works to a certain level, but it, it is not ultimately transformative of the emotional state that is causing problems. That it, it becomes both both our mental constructs that are laid over the mental the, the emotional state, and they're not transforming to the emotional state, they are more containing to it. 